It's 106 Greatest Hits Radio. Good morning, Marvelous Marvin here. And on the telephone with me, I've got from Yes, Rick Wakeman. Just an amazing all-around musician and just a, a great guy. And good morning, Rick. Good morning, sir. Oh, good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. i got to tell you, I, I was a Straubs fan back in the day, and I found oh, out. Oh, wow. That, yeah, I love the Straubs. In Cleveland, Ohio, where I grew up, we love British music, and uh, the Straubs, definitely one of my favorites. And, of course, uh, you're a studio musician for a long time, played with a Cat Stevens' Morning is Broken, that beautiful piano piece, which I lived near a church, and they actually would play that. In the mornings. Wow. Pretty cool. Uh, you played with David Bowie, Hunky Dory, one of my favorite albums of all time. And you had a chance to be one of the spiders from Mars. And then uh, you got a call from a, a bass player named Chris Squire. And how did that change your life, Rick? It did. It changed it a lot. In fact, I, I got the call from Chris um, uh, to ask if I wanted to, to join, uh, join the band. Join, yes, because they were looking at changing the direction of music to become sort of more orchestral rock. And I liked that idea, and I went along to meet them all at a rehearsal. And that morning, I got a call from David, David Bowie, who said, hey, come and meet me in Hampstead in London. He said, I want to talk to you about something. I said, OK. So I said, look, I'm, I'm out during the day. He said, come, meet me in the evening. So uh, I did the rehearsal with Yes, and then I went down to meet David, and he was there with Mick Ronson. And he said, look, I'm, I'm putting a band together, which I'm calling Spiders from Mars, and I want you and Mick to, to, to front it. And I went, oh, wow. Well. And he said, oh, wow. Well. And I said, yeah. I said, I've just been asked to join, yes. And he went, oh, decision time, is it? Laughing then. I said, well, yeah, it is a bit. And he said, okay, give us a ring, ring tomorrow. And the interesting thing was that I mean, I love David Bowie. To, to, to be. He's the most influential person I've ever worked with. I learned everything with him and Tony Visconti on how to work in a studio, how to treat musicians, how to deal with him. Fantastic. And I loved his music, you know, to, to bits. And I got home and I thought, you know, the only thing is that, obviously, because we'd be playing David's music all the time, there's only so far I can actually go. There'll be a ceiling. Whereas if I if I join, yes, there's much more chance of, of having an influence, you know, on, on the music in, you know, in a proportionate way. And even though David was miles bigger than yes at the time, I, I, I chose... Yes, and I told David, and he actually said to me, you've made absolutely the right decision. And in fact, years later, we became neighbours when we both lived in Switzerland. And it was in the sort of the, about 78, something like that, 77. We were in a little club called the Museum Club in Montreux. And he, the subject came up again. He said, you know, you made absolutely the right decision. What to do? He said, because he said, I ended up changing my band of musicians and things anyway. And he said... Uh, and it's proved a point. He said, you're absolutely spot on right. So that was that was nice that, in a strange way, because David had been so influential to me, it was really nice to know that uh, that my difficult decision got his approval. Yeah, if you didn't join Yes, you could have been in the Spiders from Mars tribute band tour in the world right now, so I think you definitely <laughs> made the right choice. How do you keep music interesting for you? Do you, do you still practice? Do you listen to music? Yeah. Uh, what's your musical yeah, I, life? Yeah, I practice. I mean, if, uh, obviously when I'm on tour, you, you can't because you're playing you know, virtually every day, day. But at home, yeah, there isn't a day that goes by and without me sitting at the piano or if I'm recording, obviously, you know, working with my engineer. Uh, I play every day. And uh, I'm very lucky. I'm involved with so many different kinds of music that it, it's so diverse that it just keeps everything really, really interesting. So... Uh, uh, I've never been bored. The day I get bored, that be the day I give up. And I can assure you, I'm never going to get bored. Well, there's just so many types of music and just around the world. And I know you love world music. And I just got back from Cuba a few months ago when American oh, citizens wow. could just go there and walk around. That's uh, illegal now. And Talk about Cuba and uh, your experience in Cuba. I loved it. I had a fantastic time. I mean, I went there. I mean, my political persuasions are entirely the other way than, uh, than down there. But... Uh, uh, without going into the, the full details, I, I wanted to go and play in Cuba because I was very interested in the music, very, very interested. And uh, it was very hard to hear natural Cuban music you know, outside of Cuba to get it, get hold of it. And I'd mentioned it to a few friends of mine, especially a, a, a guy who runs an organization in Switzerland. And cut a long story short, I was involved in helping fundraise to look after uh, and, and uh, give money to a a children's cancer hospice hospital in in Cuba in, in Havana, and uh, he he 
knew that I was desperate to try and go to Cuba to play, to you know, to listen to the music or whatever, and you, it was impossible. And then um, I, he, one day he said to me, "Come over to Lugano where he lived." He said, "I want to talk to you." So I went over there, and he said, "You want to go and play in Cuba?" I said, "I'd love to play in Cuba, you know, and, and listen to Cuban music." He said, "You can go," and I said, "What do you mean I can?" I, I said, "I said the only the only person probably who could ever." invite me in who would never do that anyway is Castro and he said he's invited you and I said you're joking he said no he said as a thank you for the work you've done with the with the children's hospice and that, that he, he said he wants you to go that's and, just pretty amazing it really is and I just I was jaw dropped and I went we went out and we played we did three shows we were the first western band uh, of any note to go and play there and it was phenomenal. And I visited the hospital. I actually spent four hours with Castro and his translator. And the interesting thing is, he knew that I was, uh, my, shall we say, my political persuasion could have been further from his. And my wife, who came with me, is a journalist. And he didn't allow Western journalists in then. But, uh, but we, you know, made it very clear to him we were there uh, uh, to help support the hospital uh, and to pay. There was no money. We didn't get paid. Um, but we knew that because they didn't have any money down there. So what I did, I did some shows in in Mexico and Costa Rica, um, which covered the cost of getting everything down there and out. So uh, there are many, many other stories as well that go with it. And we made a, a, a DVD, which I called Made in Cuba, which was just a wonderful, it's just a wonderful sort of memory of the whole of the whole uh, whole event. It was it was fascinating. Yeah, it's, it's it's some, absolutely fascinating. It's something you'll never forget, and it changes you. It just really does. It, it does, you know. I, it, it, it does indeed. I learned an awful lot. I, I mean, I loved the people. The people were were fantastic. Um, and uh, as I say, although the, the political persuasion couldn't be further from mine, uh, you know, I got to learn and understand how certain things had, had happened. And it was. You know, I met his brother, Roll, who's now in, in charge, and, the, and a lot of the other of the family. And you sensed that things were, were going to change, but but not as uh, not to the extent that they were were before. They, uh, change would have to be tempered, and uh, and it, it's it's going that way. And I and I'm pl- I'm pleased for the people, and I'm pleased for the country because they're 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 nice people. Yeah, I, some of the sweetest people, and I could listen to Benny Moray and the Bibo Vadez all night and all day. I tell you what. Just... Well, do you know when I was down, they said, "Is there anything you'd like to do?" And I said, "I'd like to hear as much natural Cuban music as possible that's been untainted by the Western world." Really. Right. And they said, "Okay, we'll organise some concerts for you." I was there for ten days, and during the days that I was there, uh, as, as well as doing the concerts, the three concerts. They organized 41 concerts for me to go and see. It's nice I, to be Rick Wakeman. That's all I got to say. Well, I tell you what, I heard some most amazing music, amazing styles. I went to music colleges and heard all, all the things. And it was uh, a wealth of wealth of knowledge that came through. And it was interesting listening to Latin music that had not been um, heavily influenced by outside sources. And it's funny, in Havana, they even now have a statue of John Lennon. Uh, Castro didn't like the Beatles or any of that Western music, and then John Lennon wrote Revolution, and then you got a statue. Funny how that works. He got the statue of, yeah. Yeah, I got my picture taken with the statue and uh, and the gla- uh, the glasses that get, get stolen every other week. <laughs> <laughs> how did being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year affect you? Um, I, I was very proud. I mean, for me, induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is the music. I don't think it's the people because in, you know, in years to come, you know, long after I've departed this mortal coil and a lot of the other people who are in the role, you know, people won't be, but in, yes, they'll be interested in the people involved, but it'd be the music that they'll listen to. It's the, it, it, it's the music that, that lives on. So I was proud that Yes Music finally got in. I do think um, that Prog has been overlooked a lot um, by the Hall of Fame and I've in a nice sort of voice, my opinion. But I'm glad that they that uh, that Yes Music is now in. I'm, I was, you know, disappointed that sadly Chris wasn't alive to to be there because being a founder member that would have been great. But uh, you know, as I've said before, that 
you know, sadly, there's a few bands that have gone in where people who really should have been at the induction weren't there because they passed away, like like John Lord in, in Deep Purple, like, like Keith Moon and John Entwistle in The Who, and you think, you know, I, I, I wish sometimes bands would get in a little earlier. I mean, it took, yes, 50 years, you know, or nearly 50 years. You know, it'd be nice, and the same for Deep Purple, it, it would be nice sometimes if perhaps uh, bands that everybody knows are worthy to go in you know, perhaps went in when, uh, shall we say, as many as the founder members and important people are still alive, you know. Absolutely. Tell us about the show. We're looking forward to it. I'm bringing my neighbor, Dave. He's a giant Yes fan, by the way. When I just when Oh, I, great. When I first moved to my, neighbor, my new neighborhood a couple of years ago, uh, Dave comes out and he said, Hi, I'm Dave. I'm your neighbor, and I hope you like music. And then he started playing Yes music, and I thought, I moved <laughs> to the right place. But tell us about the show. I'm bringing my neighbor, Dave. We're going to have a great time oh, Wednesday okay. well, night. October 11th at Ruth Eckert Hall, Clearwater, Florida. Tell us about the show. Well, we've, uh, we, we've, it's a real, it's hard to explain. I mean, it, it's, the show has developed so brilliantly. We've, we've got a mixture of music from both the eras that, uh, well, the different eras that Trevor and I were both involved with the, with the band. So you've got a lot of, you know, you've got everything from sort of talk and uh, 90125, a big generator to, Close to the Edge, uh, um, Going for the One, Fragile, and Yes songs and things. And uh, it, it's it's really interesting because Trevor has, has put his own stamp on all of the guitar parts uh, that he didn't originally play. And I've done the same, hopefully, with the pieces that I never originally played on. So the pieces have taken on a whole new genre without actually without changing, if you know what I mean. And, they're, and they're, they're so good, we're so happy with it. We've added a couple more pieces in from that we did on uh, from last year, changed a few things around, put a couple of few extra fun bits in, and uh, it, it's, we're just having a ball. We're just so enjoying ourselves playing. Well, there's and, nothing... Uh, there's nothing better than real music played by real talented musicians. And people say, well, uh, you, LPs sound better than CDs or tapes. And I say, listen, the best way to hear music is live. You're absolutely right. And what's fantastic is the the audience responses have been just so phenomenal. Um, and people say, oh, it doesn't make any difference. You play what you play. It, it's not true. It lifts you to another another level. It really uh, does. I'm, I mean, we we come off. I mean, quite literally, at the end, we go to the dressing room, and, and suddenly we realise we're exhausted, but we weren't when we were on stage. It's it's, uh, it's interesting. And it's a spiritual, uplifting power of music. It's uh, good for everybody. And one final question, Rick Wakeman. Yes, we're talking to. Uh, will you be wearing a cape? And is it hard to play a keyboards with a cape on? Just thinking. It's hard to play them without a cape on. <laughs> um, I, it's 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 like you ask a. An actor's going to play King Lear. You know, if you if, if would he go and play King Lear in his jeans and T-shirt? He doesn't feel the part until he's dressed up. David Bowie had it to a T. He was a, he was not only dressed for the part when he went on stage and became a different character. He had different names. You know, he you know he had Ziggy and he had you know like he had these different names, which was fantastic. Um, I I can't imagine doing a rock show without the cape on. I don't feel I don't feel dressed. I really don't. We are so much looking forward to the show. Wednesday night, October 11th. Yes, it's going to be a great night at Ruth Eckert Hall. The sound there is an amazing, and uh, it's just uh, going to be extra special with really amazing musicians. Thank you very much, Rick Wakeman. I appreciate uh, you. you taking time. I to appreciate talk it. Us. Thank you ever so much. Thank you, Rick. God bless you, my friend. Thank Thanks. you so Thanks. much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.